Right. Hello, everybody. Uh, Data List Investments here. I know that it's been a very long time since we posted a video, but uh, very recently I just got admitted to Stanford University's class of 2026. So that's very exciting and, you know, it kind of starts a new chapter in my life. But um, that's the reason that I haven't been able to post a video these last six or seven months because uh, I just had, kind of had to buckle down with the whole college app process and everything. But now that that's done and everything's kind of set in stone now, um, I kind of wanted to get back into the swing of things and uh, hopefully in the near future I'll start to crank out these videos a little more often. So without further ado, today's stock of the day is going to be Callaway Golf. The ticker symbol is ELY and the date today is February 20th, 2022. Uh, as we do with other videos, we're going to try to analyze the industry first and then see how the company actually specifically fits into that niche. And that's what we're going to do with Callaway Golf today. Uh, so before we actually start with the industry analysis, I kind of want to give a quick profile of what Callaway Golf is and look at the stock at a glance. So Callaway Golf is an established apparel and equipment maker in the golf industry. So basically they make a lot of stuff for golfers, both professional and amateur. And um, you know they're very well known across uh, the golf industry. But in recent years, they've actually started to shift their narrative a little bit away from this apparel and equipment sector and are starting to leverage technology to make themselves kind of what you would call a growth company and honestly, in my opinion, they're moving more towards the consumer discretionary sector uh, in terms of fun and leisurely activities. So that's what I think uh, that they're doing. And they're doing this through the acquisition of Top Golf and Five Iron. And uh, we're gonna talk about these two acquisitions later on in the video, but they're very important and they're kind of changing the identity of Callaway Golf itself. But uh, that's the business profile. Now, if we look at this stock at a glance, we can see that it's trading at a little bit over $23. And uh, we can see that it is very near its 52-week low and well off of its 52-week high. Um, like many names in growth, uh, Callaway Golf has been hammered over the last three months. So I think right now it's um, you know probably something that we should look at. Uh, we can see that the market cap is $4.35 which classifies it as a mid-cap stock. And we can also see that it's trading at a price-to-earning ratio of 12.85. So overall, uh, things look good specifically uh, with the stock from a value investing basis. Uh, so now we're going to jump into the industry analysis, and we're going to try to analyze uh, the golf industry specifically. And I know that it might be hard to believe that golf is an industry, uh, but I assure you that it is booming, and it is indeed an industry. So golf just kind of refers to the game of golf and uh, the money that can be made playing that game. So what's interesting about golf is that unlike many activities during the pandemic, golf actually saw an uptick um, you know, in interest. And that's because I think in large part due to the fact that golf courses specifically are very vast and expansive, um, which means that there isn't a lot of areas for COVID-19 uh, to be transmitted. And so because of that, uh, I think golf was a recreational activity that picked up a lot of interest in that year. Um, and overall, I think people now are starting to play it more for fun. Uh, before golf, I think had the vibe of being just a sport uh, that was for rich entitled people. Uh, but now because of things like Top Golf and because of how much interest has been accrued, you know, just in the pandemic for golf, that it has become a fun game that many people can play uh, at any time. Okay, so now that we've kind of looked at the golf industry specifically, and obviously there wasn't a whole lot to analyze because it's not really an inherently complex industry like say railroads are. So now that we've analyzed that, we can kind of see how Callaway Golf fits into that industry and uh, see if we can take advantage of the opportunity that's presented to us. So first I just kind of wanted to analyze the revenue breakdown of Callaway Golf and just quickly refer to when I said that Top Golf was basically switching Callaway Golf's identity. And uh, here's what I mean. So this was taken from their recent quarterly presentation after they reported earnings. We can see that Top Golf encompasses 39% of their revenue, which is more than the rest of the two segments. So again, it tells us that Callaway Golf is shifting its focus away from its apparel and you know all the other brands. They still have focus on it, but more than that, they're trying to focus on Top Golf and building that Top Golf brand and making sure that they, you know, grow the industry and grow the business itself. And they think that Top Golf is the best way to do that. We'll talk about that a little bit more um, towards the later end of the presentation, but I just kind of wanted to put that out there. Um, this is just another supporting fact of information. 
this isn't this isn't really gonna you know change my investment thesis at all but it does tell me that callaway golf is diversified in terms of revenue because they are getting revenue from many continents and uh, you know many countries so you know that's obviously a good thing it's not a terrible thing um but yeah it shows us that they're diversified but most of their business is still domesticated here in the united states so now we're going to look at the financials of callaway golf and you know just kind of look at how strong uh, the three financial statements are so firstly we're going to look at their financial fortitude and if you have seen my other videos you'll know that i'm a big proponent of using scores to assess financial strength uh, because scores are, are really interesting because they just kind of take these aspects of um, a balance sheet and they combine them into this comprehensive score that tells you whether or not the balance sheet is good um, so the Piotrowski F score is one of those scores, and it ranges from 1 to 9, 1 being very financially bad, and 9 being very financially strong. So we can see that Callaway Golf ends up right in that middle ground there at 5. So, you know, that, that's not the best, you know, it obviously could be better, uh, but it's not the worst either. And considering that it is a growth stock, I think I'm relatively happy with a 5.0 Piotrowski score. Uh, so these two photos that I have here on the slide are uh, taken from a website called the Ticker Terminal that kind of makes everything from the balance sheet and all of the important metrics very easy to read. Uh, so it's, it's a really cool you know platform. You guys should definitely use it. Uh, so the things that I've uh, highlighted here in blue are what I believe to be the more important aspects of the balance sheet. So we can see that the total assets, if you look right here on the right-hand side of the screen, uh, we'll see that the total assets remained relatively stagnant for a few years because Callaway Golf was mainly focused on their apparel business. However, in the most recent years, it's uh, it's really spiked up because of their acquisition of Top Golf, and because of their acquisition of Top Golf, they have a lot more assets now, and they've kind of turned their, themselves into a growth stock more than anything else. Um, but as always, with more assets, also comes more liabilities, and I've highlighted that in the bottom here. Their liabilities were very low when they had an, when they had their apparel business. However, with their acquisition of Top Golf, they have a lot more liabilities now because Top Golf is a massive business. Um, again, not a bad thing. It's just that they do uh, um, you know have a lot more liabilities in order to fund their future growth. And uh, just to kind of tie it into that point, we can also see that their total debt has ballooned uh, as of late. Again, because they need to focus on the growth of Top Golf, and they need to fund their acquisitions in order to grow the game of golf, and in order to grow Top Golf, and as a result, grow their own business. So again, it's not a bad thing, but uh, a lot of their debt has been factored into their comparatively lower Piotrowski F score. Um, so not disastrous, but just something to keep in mind. Uh, profitability. This is where I think that Callaway Golf shines, and I think that it is in large part due to the fact that Top Golf is wildly profitable. And, you know, there's a really long story behind that, but I'll try to summarize it here as best as I can. But uh, basically, when you go to Top Golf, you rent out a bay with many friends, and that bay has a fixed cost. You know, it doesn't increase with the amount of people that are in the bay. So it is in your best interest to bring more people to the bay because it'll be less money for you. Um, but the re but that's not actually where top golf's profit lies by bringing more people into the bay you're actually enticing more people to buy the other aspects of top golf and the main aspect the most profitable aspect of top golf is the restaurant and the food and um you know in my opinion i've, I've been to top golf many times in my opinion the food is wildly overpriced However, it does add to that experience because Top Golf is a social venue. It's a, it's a it's a social gathering. So basically, when you order the food from the Top Golf restaurant, it does add to the experience. And just just you know, from what I've seen, most people that rent out a bay at Top Golf will order food. So by bringing more people into the bay, you are kind of lowering the cost for yourself. But at the same time, you are going to be buying some of the restaurant food. And the restaurant is wildly profitable. And, you know, that I think is the biggest contributor to how Top Golf is very profitable. And Top Golf being profitable means that Callaway Golf is also profitable. So these couple of uh, pictures will show, you know, their profit margins over the past few years and how their revenues have actually grown too. So we can see that the revenues have almost doubled just over the last year. Again, because of their acquisition of Top Golf. Uh, they now have a lot more revenues and are projecting a really good trajectory for growth as well. So I think that bodes well for maybe the next decade or so um, if Callaway Golf is committed 
uh, to making Top Golf a really big player in the industry. Um, the picture to the right, the profitability rank, that's just from Guru Focus, and uh, you know I'm not going to spend time reading that, but you can see that it's mostly green flags in terms of operating margin and all of that stuff. So they are a profitable business, and that is a very good thing. Okay, so here I just want to start, start talking about Top Golf and how it's kind of changed Callaway Golf's identity. <clears throat> So at a glance, I'm going to do my best to explain what Top Golf is. Uh, but basically, what it is is it's a big, massive caged driving range that has a bunch of bays that you basically rent out with your friends. If I'm not wrong, the bays have a fixed cost, and I believe that it is $90. Uh, so when you go there, you and your friends just start golfing and hitting the balls wherever and you know whatever. Uh, and using some technology called the Top Tracer technology, you can actually look at the analytics of your swing. You can see how fast your ball went, how far your ball went, and all of that stuff. And it kind of is, it's basically made a competition because uh, there will be leaderboards and, you know, you can have a friendly competition with your friends and see who's kind of the best golfer, I guess. But uh, this basically venue, this company, uh, has turned Callaway Golf into a growth story and has now become Callaway Golf's biggest revenue driver, as again we can see in this picture uh, that shows the net revenue by segment. Um, the biggest thing that you know I've mentioned many times is that it makes golf cool. Uh, because I think, again, with the whole friendly competition factor and the fact that the top tracer technology shows you so many analytics of your swing, uh, it makes golf quite interesting. And I've actually frequented Top Golf many times. And before you know, I, I knew about Top Golf. I, I never really golfed on a golf course or anything. Uh, but because Top Golf is a fun place to hang out with friends, I've gone many times. And I think that's kind of what's transforming the narrative of golf in general. And overall, that's how Top Golf is transferring the narrative of Callaway Golf. Uh, at a glance, this is what Top Tracer, um, you know, kind of looks like. Uh, in a Top Golf venue, you'll see that again. There's a lot of data that is presented to you, and overall, it's just kind of really cool to see it in front of you. Uh, so again, Top Tracer is a really good technology and has helped Top Golf immensely. So now that we've kind of you know reached sort of the end of the video and we're starting to wrap up a little bit, uh, I kind of want to just recap what you're getting when you invest in Callaway Golf, and that is nothing more than the future of golf. So at the end of the day, if you have reason to believe that golf as a game is going to be dying in the next 10 years, Callaway Golf is not going to be immune to that, and this isn't something that you would invest in. However, for me, given the consumer trends and consumer sentiment over the past couple of years, and the fact that Top Golf has essentially transformed the game of golf for the better, uh, I think that the prospects for the next decade, for me, uh, remain very, very good. And I think that Top Golf can grow uh, a lot from where it's at right now. So now I just kind of want to highlight a couple of random miscellaneous things about Callaway Golf that do make it a good company, but also are very necessary in analyzing a company. The first thing I wanted to analyze was the management and workplace. This is something that you know I, I kind of neglected in the couple of, in the past couple of videos. But of course, as with any company, management and workplace is extremely important to guide the company in the right direction. But overall, from what I see, um, it's mostly just green flags. There's not you know anything bad that really jumps out at me. These are just reviews that are taken from Comparably and Glassdoor. And just kind of at a quick glance, we can see that the company culture seems to be doing quite well, and most people approve. Uh, of the CEO. Um, this is upper management Chip Brewer and Artie Stars. They're both really experienced people uh, and are mainly heading Callaway Golf because Artie Stars heads Top Golf and Chip Brewer heads Callaway Golf. Uh, and overall, they are very good picks and uh, have steered um, the company into a really good direction. And uh, I think overall, in the future, it'll be really good for them. So one more thing that I also wanted to touch on is insider transactions. Uh, we can see that Brian Lynch and Chip Brewer have uh, bought back shares of their own stock. And of course, it's always good to see uh, insiders buying back their shares. Uh, next, I just kind of wanted to talk about some analyst ratings. Uh, usually, I don't really use discounted cash flows or valuation methods to value a company because at the end of the day, if you believe in a company, that should kind of be your valuation. But I do like to see analyst targets and see if I agree with them. Uh, overall, everything that I see looks pretty good. Most people rate it as a buy or a strong buy. Uh, but tip ranks has uh, given it a 55% upside on price target, which I think is a little steep, um, you know, considering that uh, we would have to move up a lot just to get there. 
Uh, but I do definitely think that $40 is attainable, but it will take a long time horizon to actually see, you know, Top Golf's growth materialize and how that actually translates over to Callaway Golf's revenue. But overall, I am a believer in the prospects of this company. I think they're pretty good. Uh, to cap off the video, I'm just going to highlight a couple of risks with the company. But the really main risk is that the biggest opportunity that Callaway Golf has is also its biggest risk, and that is just the game of golf. Because if golf dies, Callaway Golf will also die as well. You know, they're not going to be immune to that. Um, also, they're not immune to recessions because golf is cyclical. It, ki it kind of highly depends on if people have discretionary money to spend. And if they don't, then uh, Callaway Golf will also experience a downturn. Um, their lack of financial strength is also a little bit concerning just because of how much debt they've taken on. But if they can fund that with revenue growth, then it's totally fine. So with that said, I'm going to wrap up the video for today. Uh, thank you all for watching and tuning in. Uh, let me know any questions that you have in the comments below. Uh, be sure to leave a like and please consider subscribing. Uh, thank you again and I will see you all in the next video.